Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this edition of Living the Little Way. Uh, just a few updates on what's going on around the parish this coming week. We're continuing our work on the new hall, and things are uh, wrapping up in terms of some of the uh, internal decorations and construction that we're doing in preparation for bringing in the new equipment so that we'll be able to hopefully open up by mid-March. Uh, uh, just a reminder that next week we'll be doing a special edition of Living the Little Way about the Synod of the Universal Church. Uh, and we're going to be going over the process and procedures that we'll be employing right here at St. Therese to get the information to the diocese that can be forwarded then on to the Holy Father in Rome. This week, it's my pleasure to have two of our young adults with us, uh, Paige Levon and Joey Anders, who are going to be talking in a special way about uh, another aspect of sharing faith. Last week, we talked to three of our young adults about how they maintained their faith after they uh, were in later high school or left home for college, what they did to maintain that faith, which is a important reality given the fact that 60 to 65 percent of the young people in the Catholic Church at least fall away for a time from the practice of their faith after they leave home. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different focus. We're going to be talking about what these two young adults do to practically bring their faith to others because evangelization is an important part of how we live our lives as Christians. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of this edition, last week we interviewed three of our young adults. Uh, two of them were uh, college students and one was uh, a high school student talking about how they preserved their faith, how they helped their faith to stay strong uh, as they went into young adulthood. And that was important as I uh, preface this edition with because nearly 65% of our young adults uh, leave the church at least for a time after they uh, leave home. This week I have Joe Anders with me who's a senior at Brandon Valley High School and Paige Laban, who's a senior at O'Gorman High School. And we're going to shift the focus a little bit. Uh, instead of talking about what they do to keep their faith strong, I want to discuss with them what they do to spread their faith to other people. So I thank you both for being here today and uh, taking this opportunity to talk with our parishioners and other people that will be watching this edition. Uh, let me kind of start with uh, this question, um, how important do you think it is for you to be witnesses of your faith um, to your peers, uh, to people that you go to school with and uh, people that you know? I'll start with you, Joe. What do you think? Okay, yeah. I mean, I'd say, I'd say very important. I mean, even just in my like group of close-knit friends, a lot of them, their parents don't put emphasis on on just going to church or just like having a faith life. So I mean, you know, a lot of times on Sundays I'm going to church and they're just not. So if I'm their only exposure to just like Jesus and I'm really just, I mean, a lot of people just don't get that exposure to Jesus and they just like don't even really think about what their faith life should look like. So if I'm their only exposure to that, I mean, I kind of take that seriously and I try and just have whatever small impact I can have on them. I try and make that impact a good one. Paige, what do you think? I agree with everything Joey said, um, but also I think that, you know, my experience, I've been going to a Catholic school since I was, like, in preschool, and so I'm surrounded by a lot of, you know, hardcore Catholics, I guess, but also there's a lot of people who go to um, a Gorman who end up falling out of their faith, and so I think it's really important to have someone to be there um, to help them get back on track when they falter and, like, also, you know, there's a lot of people who go to Gorman who aren't even Catholic, and so it's like, I want to be that exposure to Catholicism 
um, at a more like real level than you know just in theology classes and stuff like that. Thank you. I uh, want to kind of emphasize a, a word, strength, uh, that everybody's been blessed by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord, with different strengths. And we use those in different ways to communicate our beliefs and what we hold important to other people. Joe, one of the ways that I have always found you uh, to be most witnessing of your faith is in your ability to do two very important things. Number one, you have a very bright and insightful mind and you're constantly searching out the truth, um, trying to find out what the truth of, of life is all about and life of our faith is all about. But you also have a tremendously engaging personality which uh, gives you the ability to present that to other people without being threatening to them. Um, can you respond a little bit to that? I mean, yeah, just, you know, trying to just interact with friends in a way that God would be proud of without at the same time, I mean, for a lot of the people that, I don't know, just don't have a faith life, sometimes you can seem preachy very easily without actually being preachy. You know, you mention, you mention anything like, I don't know, God or your faith or any of that stuff comes up and they just kind of, they just kind of shut down. And so, I mean, when I'm just interacting with friends, I'm just trying to make them feel welcome. I'm just trying to make them feel like they can just be themselves. And I mean, God's, I mean, Father says it in his homilies, you know, I want to be one of the people where when I'm walking down the street, people are going, oh, there goes one of them Catholics, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So just how I live my life without actually just like preaching God's word, just how I live my life. And people just wonder, like, what is it that he has that I can, that I'm looking for? And I just, and it's, it's God, you know? One of the other things that you do too is, uh, you know, I know you're taking a course right now in Catholic ethics. And uh, it's certainly not an easy course. It's uh, something that involves a lot of reading and a lot of response in how you uh, give back to your instructor. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so I'm in a lot of courses in school where it's kind of medical field fast track. And I mean, I'd say we live in a pretty secular world. You know, a lot of people are just looking for like why science can disprove God. But one thing I love about science is just like looking for God in science. I mean, God made the world and, you know, he left all these little like keys for us, these little, I don't know, little Easter eggs, I guess. But just like looking for those in science and in the world. And I just think that's fun to do. And so before I go into med school, I want to, or just college, I mean, first undergrad. But um, I just want to have like I want to understand what it is that I'm going to go and be learning about, and I want to understand what the Catholic Church teaches about that. So, I mean, I just want to go into it prepared, and I just think that's that's the main reason I'm taking the course. I just want to know what what the Catholic Church teaches on it before I go and learn about it from a secular school. Paige, one of your greatest strengths is, um, and I'm going to use a word, uh, you're a seeker. And a seeker, to me, means someone who is constantly looking at ways that not only can you improve your conscious contact with God, but also how you can uh, bring God to other people in new and exciting ways. One of the things that you came to me about, uh, oh, maybe six, seven months ago, was we really need to bring together our young adults and uh, to talk about our faith in a less structured environment than confirmation or uh, a formal uh, instructional milieu, but where we could talk to each other uh, as adults. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I started a youth group, um, and we meet every other Wednesday, and we talk about um, just whatever topic, I guess, comes up. A lot of times we'll watch a video and um, then we'll kind of see how that video, usually it's like a documentary about a saint or just a story, um, and then we'll see how it connects to God in the real world. Um, I really wanted to start it because I know for me, like, sometimes it's hard to realize that I'm going to college and that when I go to college, it, you know, could be difficult to maintain that faith life. So I think what's really important is getting like, a strong foundation now so that when I do go off to college or anyone goes off to college, that they'll be more equipped to deal with things that come up in college, such as like 
you know, maybe I don't want to go to mass this week or, you know, stuff like that. Um, kind of giving the strength to do um, that now. And through, I think, the youth group, I've been able to um, meet new people. And then also, hopefully, they will be able to take my ideas because it's a very discussion-based. And so I hope that they'll be able to take my ideas and then also I could take some of their ideas from different, like, movies or documentaries and then um, apply that to my life because I think it's really important to hear other people's opinions and see where they're coming from in life because it gives you a firmer foundation of your faith because you understand where people are coming from in their different walks of life and how they got to um, their relationship with God as well. One of the things, too, you do is you work with little tiny people after school in yeah. the after school program at St. Mary's and they dearly love you there. How do you communicate Jesus to those little kids? Yeah, um, so obviously they're preschoolers, and so um, I can't, you know, get into a super, like, theology-based discussion with them. But um, we talk a lot about um, being kind to one another, and especially just during um, Christmas time, we were talking about um, what Christmas was really about, like the birth of Jesus and stuff, obviously, like, at a preschool level. But um, just showing kindness towards them and forgiveness because they are young and so they make a lot of like mistakes as they're still learning um, how to treat others and so I think being an example to them um, treating them well and then also expecting them to treat uh, their peers well is also a big thing which I think is really important because I think without that strong foundation like with teachers and kids it's like it's hard for kids to understand that this is how um, you should treat people and treat others, um, and how much God loves them if they don't have an adult figure in their life who does love them. And so that's my goal when I you know, go to St. Mary's every day is I hope that they can leave feeling that like I've showed them um, what it means to be Catholic, and um, hopefully they'll be able to carry on um, with treating others with respect as well. Joe, you're a good athlete. And I think one of the things that I've seen with you is that you're a good sports person. Uh, when you're out on the field, you try your very best to uh, cut everybody an even break. How do you see that reflecting Jesus Christ? I mean, yeah, just the little things. Uh, you know, during soccer, you take someone out, you just take a second and help them up really quick. Um, but then, like, more so, just like during track, when before our team will go out and one of, before one of our relays, our whole relay team will just take a second in the middle of the field and we'll just say in our father really quick, you know, and it's just, it's a small thing, but people see us, people see us out in the middle of the field and we're like, we're all taking a knee and we're all just saying a prayer really quick. And so, I mean, people see that and it just, whatever small impact it can make on them, you know, they see that and they, they it just makes them think. So wherever that leads them, that's all you can And make. that's especially important given the fact that Brandon Valley is a public school mm -hmm. and that witness of your faith. I'm going to ask you a question, Joe, and I think that this is one of the $64 million questions, okay? Um, if I were to ask you what you think one of the biggest challenges to young adults uh, in living their faith and spreading their faith is today, what would you say? Just the chaos surrounding every kid, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, our generation is growing up, everyone, pretty much everyone's got a phone. You know, social media, social media can be a great platform for, you know, spreading God's word and just promoting positivity, but it can also be just such a toxic and such a negative, negative noise in someone, such a negative noise in someone's life. There's, I mean, there's so many things on there that can tempt people, so many things that were on there that can pull you away from God. And even if it's not bad, uh, and you're just on there, it's, it is, it's a large time drain, and a lot of that time can be spent, you know, praying with God, can be spent interacting with siblings, with family, doing um, more virtuous activities. So do you see a place um, for social media in evangelization? Oh, definitely. I mean, just in the, the amount of usage that it gets from the, this younger generation, um, it's just, it's a super easy platform. You can just put something on your story, make a small post, and I mean, so many people are going to see it without much effort on the end of the spreader. Okay. Same question to you, Paige. What's the $64 million question and challenge for young adults today? 
Um, I think it's probably the the idea that surrounds Catholics as being kind of this religion that um, is not accepting towards certain beliefs and kind of forces their ideas on people, which um, I think what really needs to do, what really needs to happen is just a more open conversation about um, Catholicism and <clears throat> instead of blocking out other religions or um, people thinking that we're just here to say that we're right and this is the only way to live and it's it's not that I think it's more uh, we need to have a bigger community of all faith denominations because in reality like we're we're all not that different we all you know we want what's best for people and and obviously like I believe that the Catholic faith is like the correct one I guess you could say but I think that people need to stop putting boxes around different religions and realize that we're all very similar. Like just getting educated on different religions as well is a big thing that we need to do. Like um, not just your own religion, but also like Judaism or, or Islam or anything like that, just because it opens your mind to a different world and it also helps you f uh, firmly place your belief in this is why I'm Catholic because these other religions aren't, aren't what, inspires me to live a better person, be a better person, because I believe that you have to choose your religion. Um, so, like, I was born, like, a cradle Catholic, and it's, like, you can go through your whole life being a cradle Catholic and just believing, okay, my parents believed I was, this is, Catholic is the right way to be, so this is what I'm going to be. But I think everyone needs to find their own route and... A um, choice point. Yes, a choice point, because, especially I think that's one of the issues with when you go to college is that you're finally, like, oh, I guess I don't have to follow exactly what my parents say. So you need to make that choice yourself. And I think that's something that Catholics need to do right now is make that choice for themselves. Joseph, Pontius Pilate said to uh, Jesus, and he also said to his wife, what is truth? What is truth for you? You know, I think it all just starts with being kind to the people around you. You know, Jesus died for all of us, so just... Don't let, uh, you know, obviously religion is important to me. Religion, my faith life is important to me. I always try and have a good relationship with Jesus. But just because of the choices that someone else makes or how they act around other people, I just, that can't affect how other people treat them. You know, that's... That we that, still love them. Yes, exactly, yeah. So just, I mean, to love without bias, I think, is what truth is. That's just a rule. And I truth, try to live of by. course, is in Jesus Christ, and that's how he treated us. Yep. So yeah. always. Paige, I've got a quote for you. Just do the next right thing. What does that mean? Um, just do the next right thing is like, okay, I made a mistake, but I can't let that hold me back. I have to do the next right thing. And um, that will ultimately help you grow as a person, I think, because if you do one right thing, you're more likely to do the next right thing. Um, and so I think it's just a way of life that, you know, it's hard, hard to achieve, but it's something you should shoot for because that's what God called us all to do is just to do the next right thing. Um, and so I think that's really important. I have one last question for both of you. Um, and I want you to, to give me your most considered um, opinion on this. How important to you is the sacrament of frequent reconciliation and the sacrament of the Eucharist. I'll start with you, Paige. Yeah, so I think those are really two great sacraments, um, especially because you can frequently receive them. Um, with marriage, you know, you only receive it once. Uh, holy orders, you only receive once. Um, but with those, you can actively go out and receive it, and um, they bring you closer to God. And I mean, Eucharist is so important because it's the closest you're going to get to heaven on earth. Um, it's the closest you're going to get to um, what your true purpose in life is, which is to be in heaven. And so I think the more frequently you go, the more you're able to have a more intimate bond with Jesus. Um, reconciliation, for me personally, has always been a harder one. Um, I think it's a lot, for a lot of people, it's hard to admit they've done something wrong and then go actively seek that forgiveness. I go once a month now after you talk to me about going once a month and pestered me on it. Um, but I think just through that, I've really been able to see just an improvement in my own life. And so 
I actually, I encourage everyone to go to reconciliation more often because the more you go, the less like scary it gets. And um, I remember just leaving, you know, the confessional every time and being like, okay, like it's a new start. God's forgiven me. Um, even though I don't necessarily always deserve forgiveness, it's like he's, he died on the cross for it and for our salvation. And so um, it's like a free gift out there. So why not take it? And so I think reconciliation is also super important. Thank you. Joseph. Yeah, I mean, the Eucharist is as close as we're ever going to get to Jesus on earth. And I just think it's, I think it's really crucial to our faith life. I mean, you know, I go up there and I receive the Eucharist and then I go and I kneel back down and I'm just sitting there praying. And I mean, I just, I, I feel like I can, I can feel God's presence there, you know. I'm, I'm praying and I'm, I just feel peaceful and I just feel like I could stay there. Um, I agree with Paige. Reconciliation is a bit more nerve-wracking. For really, for really no reason. I mean, I, I know you've told me, you know, like you love it when people come in and they're just asking for forgiveness. Um, Father Dell, you know, I'm a bit of a procrastinator. And, um, really, Joe? <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> I mean, and going to reconciliation, it's, it's, I don't know, it just, it makes me nervous, even though I know how I feel when I'm going to walk out of there. You know, I'm, I mean, like Paige said, you walk out of there and it's a fresh start, you know. I think reconciliation is very important because you're flooded with God's grace and it just makes it easier to stay on track. Whereas once you've once you've gone a while without reconciliation, those sins just don't make as big of an impact on you, you know. You're whereas right after you've gone to reconciliation, you you're kind of taking note of sins and you're just kind of you're keeping track of them and trying to do better. You're, you're always focused on Exactly, them. you're focused. You're always trying to make the next right choice and and you just you're keeping track of them. And you're more ready to go to that next reconciliation. So I, I agree. The more frequent you can go to reconciliation, the easier it is and the more fulfilled your life will feel. I want to thank both of you because you really are uh, great examples of living this Catholic life. And uh, I know that you reach out and your lives are inspirations to other people. And that's really what it's about. Our faith is not about promotion. It's about attraction. Um, and you both are great attractors. And so uh, I believe that the church is in good hands with these two. And um, so I ask for us to pray for them and them to pray for us. We wish you a good afternoon. And until next time, God bless you all. Let's pray now to close this session. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, you bless us with so many gifts every day of our lives. Help us always be good attractors to other people of your love and peace for all of us. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. One last question, who's your favorite saint? Saint John Paul II. Saint John Paul II. Right, that's the one I was gonna take. <laughs> who's my confirmation saint? Mine too. Oh. Well, then. I guess so. We I got guess two votes for John Paul II. Yes. Mine is Jose Sanchez Del Rio, so God bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.